Hello, delighted afternoon, and ecstasy, excitement, euphoria, intriguing, invigoration, and enchantment would indeed describe and glorify and magnify the adventuresome Bildung's Roman journey in narration of the announcement of the sequel of Huckleberry Finn. This is the very lecture which would concern and manifest and focused particularly upon the context and the setting of the novel. I have meddled my notes and dissertations and blended with enriched text annotations and footnotes as well as I'm um, having the accompaniment of the varieties of diversified handy guides available out there in the downtown. This is a brief, the very brief synopsis of the adventures of Huckleberry Finn, consisting of 43 chapters. The novel begins with Huck Finn, Huckleberry Finn, that readers have been acquainted in retrospection from the adventures of Tom Sawyer, acquainted in retrospection, and the widow Douglas and her sister, Miss Watson, have adopted Huck to civilize and cultivate and inculcate manners and etiquettes and tenets in him, maxims and morals and principles and philosophies and dogmatism and uh, ideology and uh, aphorisms and precepts. Despite their supervision and guardianship and counseling, of the widow Douglas and Miss J. Miss Watson, Huck Huckleberry Finn dismisses their guardianship as well as their counseling while sneaking out of the house. Foster dwelling and beseeches Tom Sawyer's gangs parodying themselves as robbers and gangs. One day, Huck discovers that his father, Pap, had returned. Pap Fiend had returned to town. Because Pap has a history of violence and drunkenness, Huck is worried about Pap's intentions and agonized and with dreadful fear and anxiety especially towards his invested money because Pap would confront Huck and would want him to quit school as well as stop trying to better himself. Huck despises Pap's counsel and continues attending the school. Huck's fears are soon realized when Pap kidnaps him and takes him across the Mississippi River to live in a small cabin on the Illinois shore. Although Huck becomes somewhat comfortable with his life free from school and church, Pap's beatings becomes lamentable and Huck's caricatures his own mother to escape down the Mississippi River. So this had been that Huck was indeed being thrilled with the lethargy and the languid and the sluggard, sluggish, carefree life and languorous life. And being labadiasical. But, but intrinsically, the beatings and the tortures, exploitations of of the 
horse whipping and caning done by his father Paphine. Confounded Huck to brace himself and have that possibility of audacity to adventure down the Mississippi River and he stumbled against Miss Jat, Miss Jat Watson's slave Jean whilst he was a few miles sailing down a few years away down the Jackson's Island. Jim, who has also run away as a runaway escapade fugitive because of fear of being confiscated and sold down the river by Miss Watson. Jim and Huck soon learn that men are coming to examine their whereabouts towards the Jackson's Island and the two fugitives run away, escape down. They have an adventuresome, idyllisk, idyllisk escape, pleasant and beautiful and peaceful, down the river on a raft and sometimes a canoe sporadically. And Jean's plan is to reach the Illinois town of Cairo because from Cairo, Cairo is in between of the Mississippi River and the uh, the Illinois shore and the, the Ohio River can be reached to destroy the northern states which were freer and where had been the abolitionist movement of slavery being starred with this rebellion. However, their plan troubles, this plan troubles Huck and his conscience. He had a sensible herd and a degraded morality of conscience he continues his journey with jim however nevertheless and they travel despite his belief that he is breaking all ties of societies and religion tenets huck's trouble with the concept of slavery and jim's freedom continues throughout the novel this is a bildang's roman of Huck in picaresque genre, Jim and Huck encounter several other characters during their flight, including a band of robbers. And these robbers had been um, Bill Turner and Jean Turner and Jake Packard. Abroad, a wrecked steamboat and two southern genteel families. These genteel families had poignantly had been the Granger Fords and the Shepherd Sons, who are involved in a bloody feud. Because the only time when Huck and Jim feel free is the time when they are aboard the vessel. But that's a transitory briefness of idealistic, idealistic escape, idyllic escape, this freedom and tranquility and serenity is shattered by the appearance of the imposters, the king and the dauphin, who pretend themselves as the corn men and who commandeer and the confiscate and besiege and take over and claim and annex the raft and prevent Jim and Huck to anchorage at various places amidst the town surrounding the water to perform scams and trickery and fraudulent trickery and pranks and hoaxes upon the inhabitants and clever deception of artifice, the edifice artifices. The scams were harmless until the Duke and the King Cherey Sharad as English brothers. They, they had disguised themselves as the relatives of William and Harvey Wilk, Wilkes, who had been the brother of this, brothers of deceased Peter Wilkes. And Peter Wilkes had left 
an abundance of legacy and family's entire fortune and inheritance would be robbed with that in- intention they had taken this disguise however before the duke and the king can complete their plan and succeed in accomplish their original brothers pervade and here we are getting the three sisters of the pair of kids one was the mary jane and joan and susan well cuz they are the three sisters feud we have here our annotation the connotations the denotations references bibliography and further reading feud means respectable and poor uh, genteel Zen- genteel genteel means respectable and polished and decorous and dignified and magnified However, we have feud here, prolonged and bitter quarrel and disparity and disparagement and rivalry and enmity and schism, dispute, embroiling dispute. Antinets means the dogma, dogmatism and pragmatism, beliefs and doctrines and principles and philosophy and ideology and maxims and precepts and aphorisms and well in the subsequent confusion how can jim escape but unfortunately they are destined to get reunion with those devilish and fiendish and hellish imposters disappointed in exasperation of wealth the duke and the king sell jim back into slavery while hug while hug discovers that jim is being held captive at the home of silas and phelps firm the phelps mistook in recognizing hug as the nephew tom swear but tom swear soon comes back and hug shares a clandestine discourse emphasizing tom's captivity tom takes the disguise of his half brother seed After dismissing Huck's practical method of escape, Tom suggests that they concoct an elaborate plan to free Jim. Tom's plan is haphazardly and higgledy piggledy is based on several of the prison and adventure novels that he has read. The simple act of freeing Jim comes a com- becomes a complicated first with the rope ladders and snakes and rats. and mouses and spiders and mysterious messages the allusions towards these annotations clandestine hidden private concealed this this creed show reptes a hole and and a corner under the table a clock and the dagger behind the scenes behind the back ways behind the alley ways behind the backstage and then we have here con- concoct concoct means conglomeration fabricate plotting manipulate and scheme and complicated first travesty and charade and buffoonery and burlesque and vaudeville and first and facade and masquerade buffoonery especially buffoonery and burlesque vaudeville buffoonery travesty buffoonery vaudeville and travesty buffoonery burlesque and vaudeville muffled dampen and dull and dead end and swat and swaddle when the escape finally takes place a pursuing farmer shoots tom in the calf because jim will not leave the injured tom jim is again recaptured and taken back to the phelps farm at the farm tom reveals the entire scheme to aunt polly and uncle silas miss watson deceased but freed jim in her will tom has been aware of jim's freedom the entire voyage but did not have and disclosed it hasn't hadn't disclosed it because of 
pervading because of procuring adventuresome experiences and what we can say that one imperturbable experiences at the end of the novel Jean achieves liberty and freedom and independence and emancipation while Huck ponders his next adventure away from civilization because he had been afraid that he would be adopted and tamed and civilized by the Phelps, the Aunt Sally, especially Aunt Sally. In this context, I would take adieu, farewell, and leave, and dismiss the lecture, and verily hoping to have evangelic and celestial appearance with the commentaries. Thank you so much. Have a blissful and great and blessed